Get ready for takeoff. Because it's a take flight talk. It's your boys, James Woody. We got Fitz. We got Abby. See, I can't even say it's it's your boys. It's it's your people. It's your people <laughs> out here. All right. James Woody, Fitz. We got Abby out here ready to talk some New York Jets football. Um, playing on a Thursday. Prime time. Prime time. Never got flexed this year despite the amazing record. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got a prime time game. So, Abby, tell us, how are you feeling? I didn't even have a chance to mourn Sunday's loss because <laughs> we had to turn it around pretty quickly and already focus on Thursday. But, um, I mean, I'm more nervous than last week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, we keep saying we got to win, we got to win, we got to win. And literally this is do or die. It's our do or die game. And it's very fitting that we're wearing black this week because it's either, it's either a good thing or it's going to be our funeral this week <laughs> and the death to our playoff hopes. But, um, yeah, definitely nervous going into this week. The Jags are hot. Um, Trevor Lawrence is playing phenomenal football the last couple of weeks. They're coming off a big win. We're coming down a losing streak. And, yeah, it's basically win out pretty much and then hope that the Chargers lose and then the Pats lose too. But, um, yeah, I feel like I could be a little more hopeful. Um, but I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty pretty down in the dumps. <laughs> I was um, talking with my friend earlier this week, and I was just saying, if you would have told me at the beginning of the season the Jets were going to be 7-10 and 10, um, for the whole year, that would be great. But it's the fact that we started off the way that we did going into the bye and then kind of just fell apart this last back half. It's kind of disappointing if I'm being honest. So, yeah, let's just hope Zach can do it. Um, I'm holding on to the shrivel of faith I have in him. But, um, yeah, I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm a little very nervous. Like I said, hopes are kind of dwindling as we speak. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I've I've uh, over the past you know couple of weeks I've just become pretty black pilled on this season if I'm being honest. Um, I usually wear a Jets jersey for this. Usually wear a Jets hat, you know, something to represent the team. I didn't even bother. Uh, I, I it's, you know we were six and three, and we're seven and seven now. And I understand you know going into the season we weren't expecting to be in the hunt uh, in December. And when you zoom out, you know, it's nice. You know, we overperformed uh, to date. But as the season progresses and as you, uh, you know, see your team play better, you know, your expectations change. And I, I there's just so much to say here. I mean, I, I, in the Take Flight Talk Instagram posts, we've had a lot of people saying, fire Salah, 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 he's the worst. You know, I I am going to defend Salah. Um, with a little bit of an asterisk, I, everybody who has criticized his clock management, um, and a couple of decisions he's had over the course of the season, I totally agree. You know, the beginning of this season, Woody and I both talked about, is this coaching staff a bit stubborn? And I don't think anything has happened, but to continue to, to prove the point that they probably are a bit stubborn. Um, you know, Salah was kind of defending his mistake in the post game. Um, instead of saying, look, I should have given. I should have took the time out. Should have given our, our boys an extra shot to uh, to get the ball down the field, make it a li little bit easier for Greg. Uh, I didn't do that. Um, however, at the same same time, how many players did we have? You know, we, going into this this year and the last year, our issue was personnel, and Salah is the main reason a lot of these free agent pickups came to the New York Jets, and a lot of them did it on a discount. Um, I still believe that they're, you know, as time progresses into next season and the season after, I think it, Salah will prove to be a net positive. But this year, it's it's, it's been tough, man. Yeah, you know, the quarterback situation, everything, it's it's been, it's been tough. And I, I want to say this one last point before we kick it over to Woody here is, you know, Zach, Zach was not horrible last week. He was not horrible. He, he retained uh, an argument to be made. He deserves a uh, a chance in a QB competition for next year. I would probably give him about that as a, as a ceiling 
for what he, he did last week. But he's still missing easy throws. You know, everybody's saying, oh, it's only his second year. You got to let him develop. Sure. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily disagree with that. But the problem is in his second year where he's supposed to be developing and improving as time goes on, he got benched for a third string quarterback. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really frustrating. Um, you know, as we project out the rest of this year, we obviously, we got to win out. Patriots need to lose at least one or the chargers need to lose a AFC uh, matchup. They have two remaining. It's, it's, uh, I'm losing confidence in this season. I really lost it probably um, last week, but you know, we're still in it. Great. Um, I don't, I do not think this team, um, you know, we considering the injuries and everything that we had, the kind of questions at quarterback, it, it's just not a team that's going to make a playoff run, even even if we get there. I mean, it's it's not at playoff run level. So I'm kind of shifting my views on this season as, all right, well, let's, you know, see see what we could pick out as like positives going into next season, which typically we do in September. So the fact <laughs> that yeah. we're able to wait until December to move on to next season and projecting out into okay, like what can what can work going into next year uh, is a win. So I don't know. I, this season was again, it was exciting, it was heartbreaking, it was a lot of things. Uh, it's not over. It's mathematically not over, and I will, you know, I'm here to ride. But uh, it's it's just so frustrating how this season collapsed, and I think coaching was such a large part of it. I mean, poor play calls in the Vikings game um, at the end of the game there poor clock management against the Lions, poor decision-making at who should be playing quarterback in the second half of the second Patriots game. Um, looking at the first three games that we went one and three in when Zach was hurt, poor decision-making on who was playing quarterback then too. And the fact that we could have potentially pulled off two, two out of the three in the beginning of the season, the fact that the coaching could have potentially given a shot to win us the Patriots game. Coaching could have potentially given us a chance to win the Vikings game could have potentially given us a chance to go into overtime in the Lions game. You know, that that's that's four wins right there that we could potentially be having, and we could be potentially competing for the AFC East if we had better coaching, potentially. And it's 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 really frustrating um, overall. But, again, you know, I think all of us sitting here and all the fans here at home watching this would all agree August us would be very happy to see this record. <laughs> so, okay. Cool. Well, let's see how this, this finishes up. Woody, what do you got? Uh, this is unbelievable. I was expecting to be the negative Nancy, as I usually am. Um, but I'll, now I feel like I'm about to pick you guys up. Damn, you guys are out here talking about the season's over. Um, I would say, Fitz, your entire sentiment is something that I would have after, you know, if we were to lose this this Jags game where, you know, we're still mathematically in it, but the season's pretty much done. Like, that's pretty much how I feel after winning. But this – I mean, sorry, after losing that game. But right now, um, before that game was played, I mean, hope is still very, very much alive. Um, 98%. If we went out, 98%. Now, that's where you say, oh, well, you know, yeah, okay. can, you know can we win out? It starts with one. It literally, it starts with one, right? Lincoln Park, anybody? That's what I'm trying to say. And this is this is the one. And this Jaguars team, yeah, they're surging a little bit, right? And they've won three out of their last four. Over that last four, they have a point differential of minus five, right? I mean, yeah, they, they've, they've done some work, but this is a very inconsistent team. All right, they are without Trayvon Walker, who should have never even been a first overall pick anyway. But, you know, they, they th this is a very beatable team. I actually think that this is a more beatable team than the Lions that I think has, you know, supreme coaching, great offensive line, great weapons. You know, we obviously did um, – well, you guys saw the game, so I won't even uh, rehash it. But this team, this Jaguars team, doesn't have the same line. I like Doug Peterson as a coach. I'm not really worried about them right now. Um, and you know, they're in the, the midst of a division title. Can you believe six? They are six and eight, and they are one game out of the division title. Um, but um, you know, this is this is very winnable, even with Zach Wilson at quarterback. One thing I do want to point out for that glimmer of hope I, again, I'm, I'm shocked that I have to pick you guys up. You guys are usually yelling at me for being down. Uh, let me pick you up with this uh, little tidbit. 
right? The Vikings and the Lions, everyone always keeps saying, oh, 30-second ranked defense, 30-second ranked defense, you know, horrible defense, horrible defense, right? What what they say or what they're saying when they say 30-second or 30 ranked defense is the yardage given up, right? The most – or yeah, the most – passing yards given up but in terms of points scored points allowed the jags are allowing points left and right so this is our chance all right yardage whatever in terms of getting into the end zone of all the opponents that we've faced since the bye the jags are the worst with that so we we are very much alive. We are very much alive. All right, we're looking a little bit more healthy than that orangutan on the Take Flight Talk page. You know, saying <laughs> Jetta, we are we are looking a little bit more healthy, a little bit more spry than uh, that guy. But um, you know, we can dive right in it. You know, score predictions. You know what? I'll actually start off because it's it's a wave of positivity. Look at this, the woody stream <laughs> of positivity. All right, so I got the Jets. The Jets winning. We are staying alive one more time. Um, would they win over the Jags? I got us winning 23 to 20. All right, we're gonna see two Trevor Lawrence uh touchdowns. Um, uh, actually, actually, no, I lied. I, I thought we were gonna get three touchdowns, or sorry, they were gonna get three touchdowns, but miss an extra point. I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling it. I don't know, it's something in the air, you know what I'm saying? So, 23 <laughs> 20 New York Jets. Oh, I didn't pass it, so I'll pass it to Abby. What do you got? I have the Jets winning. I still do. <laughs> I mean, finishing up the season out, or like if you know, we're at home, last home game of the season. Um, I have 23 21 Jets. <laughs> I think it's going to be a close one. I do. <laughs> Damn. So now it's us on the same page. Uh, I had a number very similar uh, to both of you guys. <laughs> I'm going to, I need to. You know, just because I think all three of us now have one uh, closest one. score, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go and do something a little bit more radical uh, just to go and try to get some separation. Because, I mean, it, with you guys, I mean, you guys are pretty much an exact score or, or a tie here. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go uh, – I was going to say 24, 21. I was going to say 24. I can't do that now. I like, <laughs> I, I, and like, I want to go more points for the jets. I still, I think the jets are going to win this game, but if they don't, I also wouldn't be super surprised. Uh, the Same. Jags are hot. They give up a lot of points, but they also score a lot. Um, our defense is better than the Cowboys. Uh, so screw what they did against the Cowboys. I don't um, think they are, but you can keep going. Well, well, you've been wrong about a few things this past week. So I have, I'll, hey, I'll, I have not been I'll, wrong. I'll roll past that one. What? What do you mean? The, the, the Lions defense, scoring thirty-eight against us is on a the Lions slump. scoring thirty-eight slump. against us. They're in a Woody, slump. Put your helmet on. You're gonna hurt yourself. The Jets' <laughs> defense is in a slump. They have not played that well after the bye. They're the only team in the NFL that has zero takeaways in the last three games. They have not been spectacular. And they're facing teams that are coughing it up to every other team. But then when they face the Jets, everybody has, has better decision-making? No. The Jets have not played at the level that we've been accustomed to. They they have not played better than the than the Cowboys' defense after the bye. They have not. Well, again, you're allowed to be wrong. It's not illegal. Um, but if you're looking at it, you know, the Lions, high-powered offense. Bills, very high-powered offense. Vikings, high-powered offense. And with all the these games, we lost by one score. And I would argue the reason why we put up a little bit more points than we typically do against those teams is because our offense was really not doing as much as they should have. Um, so, and then obviously the Bills game, that was tough. I mean, that was weather conditions. The Lions, we held the Lions to, to 20 points. I mean, they, they were scoring more, a lot more than that. Uh, Their average is 27, I think. But so, Fitz, I mean, Fitz was saying on IG how the road average is 18. So they surpassed their road that, average. That's, that's a fact. But how you I calculated? Mean, oh, no. You so guys, no, you no. Excuse me. How you calculated? Sense. How you calculated the over or under their average score was their total score for the entire uh, for the entire season. So I went and said on the road they do score 18 points a game. So they went and did two more points than their average without the best player on our defense. So yeah, I am going to still say our defense is better than the Cowboys. 
Um, and I can assure you the Jaguars will not be scoring as much as the Cowboys will uh, last week or as much as the Jaguars did against the Cowboys last week. Um, this is all I'm just trying to delay because, again, I was going to say 24-21. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'm just trying to run the clock out and be like, all right, uh, did he, he pick the score ready? Um, I don't know. I'll say uh, I'm going to say 1917 uh, Jets. Um, I think our defense keeps them uh, to two scores. Our offense uh, is is as good a guess as anybody's, I think. But I, I, it's, I don't know. It, it's one of these, these things. So I want to clarify something because Abby and I seem to be um, on the same page. Just, you know, what the heck's the rest of the season look like? The Jaguars isn't necessarily the reason. It's not like I, I'm. you said Woody a minute ago. Like, yeah, I get why you guys are a little doom and gloom. But this is the week we should be positive. It's like I do not have confidence in this team going three and out to finish the season. I'm sorry. Like I, I love this team. I want them to. But you know the Seahawks. Seahawks are pretty good. Dolphins pretty good. Sure, we beat the Dolphins already this year, but we did that at home. I I and we did it against uh, third string quarterback. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's Tyler. like I I I really that the outlook of the likelihood of us going three and zero. I mean, all the other options, like the Patriots losing one of the next three games, I think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The Chargers have an absolute tee-up uh, of three games to finish off the season. Four they wins, do. four wins, and five wins to finish out the year. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, th th we're probably going to win um, and just tease us. If we do win and we get Mike White back for the next two, for the last two games, then, okay, maybe, maybe we could try to squeeze in there. But uh, – if we had a full healthy team from like before the season started, you know, I, I would have a very different feeling, but Abby, what do you got? So, so, so that's kind of where I'm at. If we can win with Zach this week and get Mike white back for the next two games, I will be a lot more positive, but like, like last week, I'm not going to sit here and say that Zach Wilson was a person to blame for the loss last week. People were talking crazy. He wasn't great, but I mean, look at the defense giving up that fourth and one. Um, it, you know, we had the punt return as well. That didn't help. Um, but I just don't have confidence in Zach, and that's my only issue with this week, probably why I'm a little more down in the dumps. If we had Mike White in, I'd be like, oh, we're going to go 3-0 and for the rest of the season and finish out strong. But, um, yeah, I'm just – I. <laughs> It's funny because I've been up and down all week. So it's, it's like right now when you guys caught me, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm a little more down about it. I feel like it's just, it's because the game's tomorrow. Like, like I said, we had to turn it around fairly quickly. And I mean, if Zach had maybe an extra week to kind of look at the film and everything, I would, like I said, I I might be, have a little more confidence in him. But right now I just, I just don't. That, and that, you know what? He didn't even, for the one interception he had the uh, last game, it was an easy read on the play. Like, I don't know how he did not see that. I could see that. And I'm literally 2000 miles away. Like I just, I don't get how that happened, but yeah, I'm, I'm still hopeful. Um, like I, I've had tons of people in my DMS going back and forth. You think we can do that? I'm not a complete Debbie downer. I will not speak into existence that the jets are going to like my playoff hopes are still alive. And it's funny. My uncle, he's a Niners fan. He's like, they're done. They're done. I'm like, Stop it. Like, why are you worried about my team? Worry about yours. Yeah. <laughs> Comparing like Purdy and, and Mike White. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> well, like, I want to with him all week. As he's just been teasing me. He's like, they're done for the season. I'm like, we're not mathematically. We're still in it. Um, and I still have hope. Like you said, the Pats, um, I think they're going to lose. But the Chargers, they just have such an easy schedule. My God, like Indy and Denver. <laughs> so um what i am happy if, if though is obviously i'm here in arizona a lot of arizona cardinals fans obviously last week the cardinals were officially eliminated and i don't know when the last time that's happened <laughs> where the cardinals were eliminated before the jets so that was kind of a little positive spin there but i don't know what do you think Woody? Uh, i i mean i hey nobody in that locker room is thinking about Oh, yo, can we beat the – like, we got to take it one game at a time. Mm -hmm. right? We got to 
all recalibrate. All right. We took that L, which was the third L in a row, but we got to recalibrate and we got this game, you know, tomorrow. That's what everybody in the locker room is thinking. And that's how we got to take it as well, because, you know, we don't know if Mike White will play next week or if, you know, whatever is happening. Honestly, the Seahawks are, are slumping right now. They actually have not looked that good as of late. I feel like, you know, Gino ain't right back, but somebody might have counterfeited his signature because he has not played at the same level that he began the year. So, you know, we just got to take it one week at a time. If we lose, I, yo, I would be the first person to wear black. You know, we'll, you know, have the eulogy, everything. Um, but if we win, we are, hey, we're still alive. And I think we can win. Um, you know, I do want to talk about Zach. So I'm, I'm going to just say this. Um, about him is that, you know, can you say he was the reason we lost? Like how you could have explicitly said that for the second patch game. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to say no, because there were, you know, that, that um, like you said, the fourth and, and one, the punt return, Salah's, I, I think Salah's clock, that's, I think that is the most egregious error. The whole uh, game was Salah's clock management, but Zach, Make no mistake, was not good um, almost really at all. Like, he could not run the offense. The offense did not operate in any rhythm. And something that I don't think anybody um, has talked about, but I did talk about um, in two articles I wrote this week, is that Zach's inability to make simple throws or, like, just even make, you know, basic reads killed the running game. Because what has happened, right, Bam Knight, right, had the best Jets debut um, of a rookie ever, right, continued that. He was getting 100 scrimmage yards. If you saw the Bears game that Mike White started, the running game couldn't do a thing, a thing. And the same thing happened in Minnesota, and the same thing happened in Buffalo. But the difference was Mike White was able to make passes and still drive the ball. Once they were playing the pass, then we saw Bam Knight. Then we saw Todd Johnson come out here, break, you know, break open a, a touchdown run. We saw all this happen. But with Zach, none of that happened. There was never a time throughout the whole game that the Jets were in rhythm and the Lions defense was on their heels. Not even once. What did happen, though, is that he threw a 40-yard pass. He threw a 50-yard pass. So at the end of the game, within three throws – he already had half his yardage. So at the end of the game, you're like, yo, he threw for 316. What? You know, like, Zach, let's go, baby. But if you, like, the whole game, the, the flow of the game, both offensively and then from the Lions defense perspective, they, they were never a threat because he literally could not drive the ball. There was, I don't even know if the Jets had a drive that was more than six plays the entire day. And that's, that's the problem. So um, against the Jags, I mean, LaFleur, you know, have that boy roll out. <laughs> you know, the, the Jag safeties aren't like that, right? So, you know, throw it out. Just throw it. You know, we know Garrett can make a play. Corey can make a play um, and, you know, go from there. But that inability to even do the basic things, like, yeah, you know, Mahomes throws 50 yards, right? And, and that's something I hear people say, like, oh, like Mahomes, Josh Allen. What, you don't like Josh Allen? You don't like Josh Allen? <laughs> Josh Allen can hit a screen pass. <laughs> you know, Patrick Mahomes has no problem, literally no problem just hitting a slant route. You know, if it's open, he's not always looking, you know, like that's not his only throw. But for Zach, that's literally his only throw in that. It sucks. Like, it really mm -hmm. sucks. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, that's my rant. I, I lost. I don't even know what the question was. But I, had to, say, I had to get it off my chest. Well, well, you're right. And, you know, it's funny because Abby said a minute ago, um, she said, uh, you know, I wish this wasn't a short week so Zach could have some more time to, to watch film. Um, you know, not for nothing, the kid got benched for a month mm -hmm. and he had all the time in the world to watch film and he came out and still can't hit a, a, a pass mm -hmm. under five, ten yards. Like I, I did this guy. You know, this is not what the problem should be at this point. And this is where, you know, all these, you know, Jets fans are trying to go and generalize everything. Oh, it's only his second year. Oh, it's only his second year. Like, 
the second year quarterbacks, like look around the league, you know, other quarterbacks in the league in their second year, in their first year, are they struggling with the, the easy passes, you know, five, 10 yards down the field? I don't think so. I, I haven't, I haven't really seen, not like this. I mean, Zach threw for 51%. He threw for 51%. And it's like, and of that 51%, like you said, Woody, like a lot of the yards came on the deep balls. And if you look at the deep balls, a handful, the majority of the deep balls were not even well-placed. <laughs> the wide receiver or the tight end Uzoma had to go and slow down. It was not, he was not hitting people in stride down that way. So he got lucky. I mean, hey, I'll give him credit. He put the ball where his receivers were able to make a play. And that's that's a good thing. And he deserves that credit. They were not good balls. He did not hit them in stride. He did not allow yak to happen except for when uh, D-backs just missed a tackle or just, you know, <laughs> was trying to go and, and swat the ball away. They missed. And Uzoma was able to, you know, turn turn the corner and, and get in. But, you know, e- even that wasn't, wasn't very impressive. So, you know, looking at this, when, when it comes to the Zach question, you know, I – I don't think there's any really – I don't think there's really any game that can be put on one person. Like uh, the whole season, I, I don't think it's fair to put any game this season on one per- person, even the Vikings game uh, on just LaFleur. Because you know what? Our defense did give up 27, you know. But at the end of the day, like if there's blame to be put around, it's Zach and Salah are, are the two biggest ones that that deserve uh, that. Because like Woody said, you know, these 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 – uh, we only had, I think we had 18 first, first downs. Uh, Mike White was averaging somewhere around 22, I think, um, for, for his stretch approximately. Um, you know, those things matter, man. Like, you know, getting a big home run ball, you know, once a drive, once every other drive, like that's nice. But if you can't like get another first down after you get a home run ball, it's like, okay, we're just going to have a shorter punt. Okay, we're going to have a 58-yard field goal instead. And like that's 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 not a winning formula. And like if the winning formula could be and should be your quarterback making easy throws, putting the ball in the talented receivers' hands that we have, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, Zonovan Knight, get the ball in their hands and give them some space to run and throw the ball where they can go and catch it, turn and make some some extra yards out of it. And that he still is struggling with that. And sadly, I do not believe a short week is going to fix that. And as long as those problems persist, our offense will be held back by this guy. And I'm hoping he fixes it. I don't really see any reason why to think, you know, it's going to change. Abby, what do you got? I mean, the prime example to compare him to this week is Trevor Lawrence. (laughs) Turned it around fairly damn quickly. (laughs) And yeah, I just... His, he's just disappointing, and it was. Um, I think there was one play that Garrett Wilson he missed. Uh, Garrett Wilson, and you could tell how pissed he was um, getting off the field. I mean, the chin straps went off. I mean, they had the whole camera angle on him, the whole TV, and my whole fifty-five inch uh, played that, and I could tell how pissed he was. And then I saw them after the game. I know he was like, I don't know what he said to Zach after the game, maybe like good job or something like that. But they had some sort of embrace. But even then, you could still tell that he was still just like, what the hell, dude? Like, I'm going to encourage you because you're my teammate and stuff like that. But do better almost. Um, But yeah, I just uh, I don't think like I said, I just don't think we get it done with with Zach. Um, He's just not improving. I mean, look at him compared to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, even Justin Fields is kind of forming into his own player at least. And, and Zach is just stuck. He hasn't moved. He's just stuck in, you know, not being able to read plays, not being able to make short throws wide missing wide open receivers and stuff like that. He hasn't like moved. And I mean, of course, being on the bench last month hasn't helped, but like I said, it's not anything that he was changing when he was playing the first, you know, from week four to when did we bench him week Whatever five games he was playing. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got one more thing to say on Zach, and then I want us to get into the Woody three here. Um, and this is a petty criticism. So so <laughs> keep, keep in mind, I'm acknowledging it's a petty criticism. Who gives your offensive line motorized scooters? Mm-hmm. What an impractical, weird gift. <laughs> Where are you driving around in December in Jersey on a motorized scooter? What a weird, what a weird gift to give your offensive line. I do not understand that. Petty uh, this, but what the hell was that? What the hell was that? 
Better Damn. off with a Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Gift card to Starbucks would have been more valuable. hundred <laughs> percent. That is a very, very weird gift. And he is a very, very weird guy. But you know what? As much as Abby and I think this season is sadly coming to an end very soon. Um, there are still three things that we could be looking at tomorrow night. Woody, what are the big three that you're looking at? Well, number one, I think it's the most important. I've already said it. I know we disagree about this unit as a whole, but take it or leave it. The, the defense needs to create a takeaway. Only team in the NFL that has zero takeaways in the last three games. And the teams that we faced, the Lions, the Vikings, and the Bills have all had takeaways – or, sorry, all had giveaways in their last three games, right? So we are the only one. Like, they're, they're just giving it away to everybody else. And then when we face them, we can't do it. We need to. We are 0-4, 0-4 on the year in games that we don't have takeaways. So we know that is a big factor in our offense's ability – to win a game, especially, especially with Zach Wilson at the helm. We, we, we need to take away. Give it to him at the red zone because he can't get there himself. So, so, come on, somebody take away. Second thing, if you're not first, you're last. The immortal words of Ricky Bobby. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? Trevor was first overall pick. Zach, last. He's last, okay? He's, we all just said it. Mac Jones. Pro Bowler, Justin Fields, about to win me a fantasy football championship. Davis Mills, really good last year. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Not as good this year. He got benched, but he's back. Um, but still way better than Zach. All right, Zach's stats are debatably worse than Jamarcus Russell, the biggest bust in the 21st century. Um, that is not good. It's not good by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I had some other stats in there. So if you read the Woody three, right, you can see like over the last six starts, Trevor had 14 TDs to one interception. Zach in his last six starts. Should I say the numbers? I don't know if we want to say it. Five TDs. Worse. <laughs> All right. Five, five, five. We, we won't. We won't. We already wearing black. Say it. Right, so say it. Say it. Say it. We need to hear it. Say it. Five touchdowns in his last six starts and four interceptions. Abysmal. 189 <laughs> yards per game, 189 uh, to Trevor's 289. Um, he's been he, he's not been good. He really hasn't been good. But if we you know do those rollouts, get him chucking it, you know, um, hopefully. So this is actually another thing. Uh, before I get to the third point, is that his mentals? I really, I truly don't believe, and this is why um, I, I don't think it's worth putting him in a competition next year. Is that I truly don't believe his mentals will ever get there. I don't think he's mentally wired to play quarterback in this, um, just in this league. Okay, and we saw, you know, Lafleur did great jobs. He was rolling him out bootlegs, right? And and he was he was finding confidence. Then we saw something that he has not done for Zach. I don't think this season. He had a design run on third down to get the first, and it worked. It worked very nicely. And Zach, you saw Zach. He hit him with the with the uh, celebration, you know, flip the ball to the ref. He was feeling himself. He was feeling himself. What happened when he started feeling himself? He was like, oh, Elijah Moore, yeah, let me throw this casual off the back foot, not even look if there were any jerseys of any – type over there and just threw the most lackadaisical interception I've ever seen. There are two Zach Wilsons that we've seen in his NFL career so far. The very scared, panic, happy feet Zach Wilson, who makes a lot of mistakes, and the overly confident, oh, I can do this, I'm just playing ball with my friend Zach Wilson, that gets overly confident and makes mistakes. So I, I really don't think it's worth keeping him in for a competition next year, but that's something else. Number three, Rush Hour. I'm not talking about that tremendous trilogy of movies with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. I'm not talking about the traffic, all right, that happens in New York State. What I'm talking about is the rushing game because it has been struggling. Without Brees Hall and ABT, the rushing attack has, has suffered. And Fitz, we kind of talked about this when uh, we, you know, you called out Michael Carter. You know, I tried my best to defend my mans. The rushing attack has kind of faltered. Now, Bam Knight has been getting a lot of love, right, for his scrimmage yards, but I 
I hopefully I, I've done my job in breaking down that Bam Knight is not the catalyst for his own yardage. All right, the, they were struggling. It was Mike White opening it up for Bam. And when you saw Zach play, how many yards did Bam Knight have? How many catches did Bam Knight have? He had zero targets and 23 yards on 13 attempts. I'm not saying that Bam Knight sucks. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that the rushing game does. So we need to either open it up with efficient passing, but we don't have that option, right? Because Zach, Zach, Zach Wilson is not an efficient passer. So this is a call out specifically to Michael LaFleur. This Shanahan offense, we need you, man. We need you to just move that line, get mo- people in motion, and just create lanes for Bam and Michael Carter, if you're going to give him more playing time, to run through. Because right now, how it is, we have really, really struggled pretty much every game. But uh, The first Bills game was the only exception where we actually had people um, getting open. But other than that, it has not been available unless – it's been opened up by the past, which we won't be able to do this week. So that is the Woody three takeaways. Zach sucks. <laughs> Russian game. How you guys feel? Well, about- I have to admit, I have not seen Talladega Nights. <laughs> oh. I also barely watched Rush Hour, all three of them oh. this year. <laughs> So I, I was mean, missing out for a while. I'm never going to watch Talladega Nights. I've, I've seen the clip plenty of times, but I'm not going to watch it. No, not wow. a huge. Well, and I, you know what? I've never even seen Elf. I'll just say that, too. All right. All right. We're, you're, you're right there. You're right there. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is that worse than being a Lions fan? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not as bad as being a Mets fan. Oh, <laughs> that is just a, fact. a little bit of shade. <laughs> I was, yeah, no, no. I, I mean, I was, I was born this way. All right, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. All right, go Mets, Korea, let's go, Met Jet all day. Yeah, so he's a kinda... cheater. He's still a cheater. <laughs> he's still a cheater. <laughs> I mean, with my final thoughts, is like, um. Well, Trevor Lawrence is still battling a toe injury. He was pretty limited today as of this morning. Not saying I'm, he's going to play through it, I'm sure. He's done so the last two weeks. But, um, you know, I've noticed um, when I was watching the game last week, too, Zach Wilson just looks awkward in the huddle. Just very – it's they just like they're not listening to him at all. It's not – no, I see no energy coming out of him, no motivation. And you were seeing that at some points in time earlier in the in the season. So I know he has it in him. But I mean, a couple of players were just kind of like, break, let's let's go. Like, come on, dude. This is like a huge down. You know you need to get it. Like, let's see some enthusiasm here. But um, yeah, uh, I know last week, I think Trevor Lawrence, I think he fumbled the ball one time. So if we could catch him running, kind of punch it out, that'd be great for our defense there. Um, but then of course we have to worry about scoring on the other on our end. But um, <laughs> yeah, the run game, we gotta get it going. Got to get it going. I think we had like 53 yards of rushing yards last week, and that's that cannot happen again this week. We can't expect to win with those type of numbers. So, Fitz, any last words? Yeah, I think you touched on something there, and this is something that I think we've been saying for for uh, for a bit since since the the game uh, that that Zach got benched. Um, you know, I think a big thing for me is just leadership. You know, when, when you go and look at Zach Wilson, and he does not expect you know, exude, uh, the characteristic of leadership. Um, I am I'm really, uh, I'm really disappointed, uh, in how Zach's career has ended up and not just because of the stats, not just because it's on field, you know, how he responded in that presser, not taking accountability, uh, that is dramatically hurt how his team views him. I mean, the perspective, I mean, think about it this way, you know, the quarterback is, is, the head of the offense, you know, he's a captain, you know, so the, think about this. I mean, if you're in a job and you think your boss is a bad leader, are you, do you respect your boss? Do, do you go the extra mile for your boss? You don't. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, I think that's something that, you know, the, t- the team looks at Mike White and they're like, this guy's cool, man. 
Like, I like him. Like, he 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 played through broken ribs, dude. He played through broken ribs. Like, he said, you'd have to peel me off that field before I came off on my own accord. That is a leader. And we can go and debate ability. If it was the same ability they both have, which has been proven false, Mike White is a better quarterback than Zach Wilson. But even if it was the same thing, just a leadership component, Mike White brings his team up. Zach Wilson does not. So we can go and talk about the stats and all you want, but there is something else going on at one Jets drive, and that is we do not have a leader leading this offense. And that that is what really hurts me with his development. We've used this number two overall pick on this guy, and we wanted to bring him in here to be the leader of our offense for years to come. And for the stats to not be there in year two, I could forgive him. Woody can back me up. I've been defending him since we drafted him and people were doubters. I was defending him going to the season saying, you know what? This guy does have it in him. I think he can figure this out. But when you go and do that to your team, who's been fighting their asses off all season, this defense, who's been so elite, and you don't say, you know what, boys, that's on me. I'm, I'm sorry. I need to do better. You guys are kicking ass out there, and it's the offense that's slowing us up, and that is starting from me. He did not do that. He kicked the can, you know, past the buck, and that is, that's something that I do not know if you can get past that mm-hmm. on this team with these players. I don't know if those players can turn their change their mind internally. Publicly, they're obviously going to defend them because they actually were PR trained because Zach mm-hmm. clearly isn't. <laughs> but internally, are they going to be able to change their mind and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to ride with this guy no matter what, and I'm going to fight until the death with this guy no matter what. I, I don't think the, the team feels that way about Zach, and I don't think they should. They, they, he hasn't given him a reason to. You know, Mike White played through broken ribs. The second that guy is back on the field, I guarantee you if Mike White is, at, is here for the last two games, we're winning those last two games. I, I'm confident in that because the elevation of the entire team is going to be like, oh, our boy's back. Mm-hmm. Our boys back. Let's freaking ride tonight. And and I I'm it's just it's really sad to see because I wanted Zach to be good. I I his talent is no longer my criticism. It's 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 his leadership. Woody, close us out. Well, those were uh passionate, passionate words from our passionate, passionate pilot here, Fitz. Um intangibles, the power of intangibles, it it really cannot be um, overstated. I mean, the, it, it means everything, right? Leadership qualities. Sometimes it overcomes talent deficiencies. No, not one person's ever going to tell you that Tom Brady is the most physically gifted quarterback in the NFL. No, no one's ever going to say that. But what he has been able to do, leading guys, you know, bringing, you know, bringing his mentality, bringing his leadership, um, is is unparalleled. And you know, obviously, those stats show it. Um, so yeah, leadership matters. Intangibles matter. We will see this Thursday if we can do it. Can we stay alive? <laughs> can we stay alive? Stay alive, Abby. You already know. I'm gonna leave you. How I always leave you? One word, four letters. J E T S. Judge, judge, judge. You already know. You know.